All right, time for another Nerdy Virgin podcast. And uh, once again, recording in my phone, not using the equipment that I have. I like doing it while I'm walking. I find it enjoyable. That's how we're going to do this. That's just how it's going to be. The other thing I've learned, this, uh, (laughs) I don't know, I seem to do better when I just fly by the seat of my pants on this thing instead of trying to sit down and, oh, I don't know, produce it. So, okay, well, let's, let's check in. How am I doing? How am I feeling? How am I feeling? I'm feeling very uh, frustrated in that I think I'm, I feel like whenever I can let go in one part of my life, I can't let go in another part of my life. So right now, with the stand-up, I feel like I'm much more present, but I also feel like I'm not writing anything new <laughs> or or particularly good. Uh, and then it's, then it's either that or it, sometimes it feels like the opposite. Oh, this is great material, but, uh, but I'm a robot up there. And I'd like to get to the point where they come together and I am both present and I have good material. Uh, Then I will be, I believe the term for that is a stand-up comedian. Uh, Because if I'm not that, if I don't have those two things, then it's not stand-up. It's something completely different. And the other thing I've got to be careful of is if I'm going to talk about depression in the stand-up, I can't be depressed while I'm talking about depression. I can't actually be depressed because then it's just depressing. <laughs> so, I, so that means in order for the depression, in order for the depression to come off, I, if I'm talking about depression while I'm doing stand-up, there must be a minimum amount of joy. <laughs> and I, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I'm built for that. I just don't know if I'm built for that. But maybe I'm being too hard on myself. Entirely possible. The diet continues. Um, I, I mean, I'm. Here's what I'm better at. I'm, I, I'm still cheating, but I'm not cheating as badly as I used to cheat. Like for instance, last night I had ravioli, four cheese ravioli, no sauce, just the ravioli. So compared to what I was doing, where I was, you know eating a tub of cookies this is better but it's still you know I still got sick to my stomach and you know the cheese is not good for the cholesterol but I'm I'm making some progress it was delicious ravioli though I gotta say it was fantastic was it worth was it worth it probably not so tonight I'm gonna I'm gonna Oh, here's the other thing I did, too. I'm, I'm looking at the store, and they, I'm out of my usual bread. And I notice they have Jewish bread. That's just what it's called, Jewish bread. <laughs> and I'm, I'm almost like, ah, this feels, ah, this doesn't feel right to me. This, this feels a little... Well, I'm off color. I didn't know. I didn't know that we had a special kind of bread. So I, you know, I thought I'm gonna get it. Listen, if the shoe fits. And uh, I, I had, I had some pieces of it, and I gotta tell you, it's fantastic bread. <laughs> like they really, they really know their demo. <laughs> it, it, wow. I just. Now here's the thought experiment. If I were not Jewish, would I still enjoy the bread? Do I have, like, have they figured out a way to make a bread that is only enjoyable for people who are related to the the 12 tribes? Is that, I mean, is it that, like, has their baking process gotten that specific? Well, I'll never know. I will never know. And no, and then actually, follow-up question... Let's say someone's uh, not Jewish, but they convert. Does the bread suddenly taste better? Do they finally go, oh, I get, I get it now. 
No, I, t I can taste it now. I wasn't able to get this before, but I did the studying. I can totally taste it now. Am I going to be canceled for this conversation? That's my fear. As we move into these, uh, I don't know what kind of what kind of times we're living in. Are we all getting that this is, you know, meant to be levity? Are we getting that this is? I'm not being literal here. I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings. I'm just. Is this okay to do that? Uh, who knows? So lately I've been wanting to watch uh, old sci-fi movies. There's a science fiction movie I need, we need to talk about that came and went in 1990. It was a co-produced, I think, in America and Japan. The movie's called Solar Crisis, and you can watch it for free on YouTube. And it's beautiful. Is it a great film? Well, that depends on your definition of great, okay? Like, if you define great as... Uh, as in... The level of acting was consistent all the way through and the tone was specific, then no, it's not a great movie. But I mean, if, you're, if that's a big deal to you. But if you want scenes where good actors, and these are, you know, no one gave a, none of these people are bad actors, but if you want, a, if you want a, a moment where uh, a character just sc <laughs> screams a line for no particular reason, this is the film having normal conversations and then there's an explosion of emotion just a scream out of nowhere and you're sitting there going you know you could have just could have just told me like you know I get that the situation is tense the sun's about to release a giant solar flare so they have to send a ship up and they're going to launch a, a, a giant bomb into the sun to prematurely release the flare so that the flare doesn't incinerate the earth. It's a movie called Sunshine. It's very, very similar plot to Sunshine. I think Sunshine was more to do with the sun was going out and they had to restart it. But uh, the movie, I mean, it, caught, it was a huge budget. It was a big budget movie. But for some reason, they didn't release it in the U.S. Or if they did, it was very, very. It was a very small release, and this ha it had an ache. Like uh, Tim Matheson was the captain, Charlton Heston was in it, Jack Palance was in it, Peter Boyle was in it. I mean, he's... And it's another situation too, where maybe the whole, maybe if the whole thing didn't add up all the way, um, like there were moments that were good. And so, you know, I'm, after I, I watched it, I was Googling it because, you know, now in the world with so much commentary and so many behind the scenes interviews and archival interviews that get recorded, I figured there's gotta be someone talking about this thing. <laughs> and every other review it's, it is a terrible review of the movie. But the greatest thing I've discovered is there's some archival interviews of the people who built the models of the starships in this movie. And from their perspective, <laughs> it was a great film because they're only looking at the models. And you know what? They're 100% correct. The mo like the models and the special effects for its time were fantastic. So, so everyone else on the internet, this is one of the worst movies ever made. Terrible this, terrible that. He has the model. Oh, yeah, I remember Solar Crisis. Oh, God, that Helios model was fantastic. <laughs> They're just in a totally different world. Probably didn't even see the movie. Well, they were, you know, he has the model makers. It was a fantastic film. But isn't that a metaphor for life right there? It's all, all depends on your perspective. We're all looking at the same thing, but we, we see it from a different point of view. 
And if you're a model maker, who cares with the dialogue and the acting? How does that, how does the paint job on that starship look? Fantastic, then it's an A+. In all fairness, I think even some of the model makers said, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't a very good film. And I guess the, the director took his name off the movie. Whenever they do that, the, the uh, tradition is they replace the real name with the name Alan Smithy. Or Alan Smith. So if you ever see a movie and then the director is Alan Smith, then uh, the director is already telling you how he or she feels about the film before the film even starts. <laughs> it, may as, it may as well be called, you know, producer Jim Thompson, screenwriter Bradford, Bradford Douglas, directed by... Alan Smith. May as well be producer Johnson, writer Bradford Douglas, directed by Run. (laughs) Directed by This is Awful. (laughs) Ah, fantastic. Well, and that's been my day thus far. And I think, you know what the internet needs? Somebody talking about the movie Solar Crisis while being out of breath. I think that's definitely what the internet needs. And that's where we need to go. Perhaps with this podcast. Maybe I just need to start uh, picking movies, talking about the movies, talking about Solar Crisis... There's so I mean, there's so much we can unpack with Solar Crisis, frankly. So much we can do. The ships do look phenomenal. The so the there's three plots going on. Plot number one is the ships fly into the sun, and uh, the ship keeps falling apart. But it's because there's a saboteur. And uh, plot number two is the son of the captain. Back on Earth has gone AWOL because he wants to see the captain just one more time, even though the captain has already left when he's gone AWOL. And uh, an evil corporation who's behind the sabotage is trying to hunt down the captain's son because the captain's son happened to wander into a bar where the scientist who worked for the evil corporation came in about to die because the evil corporation left them out in the desert to die. But he found this bar and he saw that the son was in a soldier's uniform and and told them (laughs) everything he needed to know. And then Charlton Heston is the father of the captain, the grandfather of the well, obviously the grandfather of the captain's son. So the grandfather goes to Earth looking for the son while the captain is flying into the sun, different sun. So three, three generations are, of the same family are working on this thing. Oldest generation is hunting down the guy who's trying to sabotage the middle generation and the youngest generation is just oh and then before that the the grandson runs into Jack Palance who's just this crazy guy living in the desert and that just gave them an excuse to kind of do a little bit of throw in a little bit of Mad Max right there they basically this movie they, they really tried to put in every science fiction movie into this movie. So the ships kind of look like Star Trek, a little bit of Star Wars. Down on Earth, there's parts of the Earth that that look like Mad Max. There's a desert, and they're driving around with machine guns on buggies. And then at the very end, when they're flying into the sun with the bomb, 
the special effects look like the end of 2001 where he's flying through the Stargate. So there's a little bit of 2001 right there. They just, they've taken every science fiction movie <laughs> made before 1990 and shoehorned it into this one. Which, uh, again, you know, who's complaining? It, ha- it has, you know, sometimes, listen, sometimes your science fiction movie needs to be a buffet. Sometimes you want to go and you want a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Are they supposed to go together? No. But why do you do it? Because you can. Because the buffet is there. Because you know what? Sometimes I want to have ice cream and a lobster thermidor and frosted flakes all at the same time. Why not? <laughs> oh man, that was... But I, I've watched that movie so many times. All these Oscar-winning movies, I have not seen them once. These movies that I would probably watch them and they would change my life for the better. I've seen Solar Crisis at least 20 times. But I think we need to do more of that. I think we need... I think I think we need more situations where they're making a movie and somebody says, you know what, let's let's throw in when Harry met Sally. This is, a, this is an alien movie. Yeah, let's it's, it's, throw in a love story. Set it in New York. The alien's on the loose, but at the same time, you've got a, a woman who's got to choose between love and career and a guy who uh, has to open himself up emotionally finally and, and just grow up a little bit. Do that, but but also with an alien. Let's also, uh, and let's throw in, a, you know, let's throw in a Doctor Who. Let's get a, Brit- a smart British guy with a, with a little glowing a glow stick. Smart British guy with a glow stick. He's the one chasing the alien. We get Sigourney Weaver to do a cameo. And you know, it, it, we need a we need a hit song too. So let let's throw in. Uh, let's throw in the Beatles. The actual Beatles, even though it takes place in um, in uh, in the year in 2022, they've they've genetically here's what they've genetically engineered the alien, and they've genetically engineered the Beatles, and they're just in, in two they're just in, in incubators that are right next to each other. So the alien hatches and, and runs out, and then the Beatles feel like they can hear the alien because they're they were both somehow created together and there's some shared genetic material so it's the beatles but they have some elements of the alien like like if you if you cut ringo star and he bleeds the the blood is acid and it will and it will um uh wear through the floor um, but musically they're all still the same <laughs> there you go that's uh that's that's the movie I want to see. And Billy Crystal and Meg Ryan, built, you know, are are uh, in it. And uh, what we'll do the we we can do a couple of things. They can they can play like uh, the, like two versions. There'll be the older version and the younger version. And we can we can de-age them. So now we got some de-aging. That's that's hip now. The kids love the de-aging. And so we'll see the younger version and the older version of them. And so they're banding together with the Beatles to hunt down the alien. And the alien is actually hunting down the alien's mother and they were separated at birth and we'll get we'll get Judy Dench to be the mother. Like this I think this could be an Oscar winning film, frankly. An Oscar winning film and you know and as long as there's an action beat every 15 pages uh we'll be fine. Okay. As you can tell, my breathing is slightly easier because now I'm going downhill. Feeling better that I'm going downhill now. So that's that's happening. Flowing down the hill as we prepare 
for what now? I don't know. The next the next bit, right? The next the next fun thing. I feel like I need to keep going. Like this can't be the end. What else is happening? Still reco- I got to still recovering that rally- ravioli. Still getting to me. But this is uh This is good. You know, I could just end. Maybe I just ended here. Wait, what are we at? Over oh, 20 minutes? That's fine. 20 minutes. This, this is enough. We all got what we needed out of this, right? 